All right, there we go. Excuse me, I'm on my phone. I'm busy here. Can you guys uh, can you guys wait for me? <laughs> I'm too keep it too down. busy too busy to do a live stream. Hold on. You know those <laughs> real estate pictures? All those people wanting them for family photos. Anyway, so uh, here we are live, and uh, we got uh, okay. Before we get into this, I want to uh, just give you a quick update. We got three photographers in queue: Margaret Bryant, the pet photographer from Texas. No date set. Larry Herzberger, early November, in uh, first no Wednesday in November, is uh, scheduled to join us. You all know Larry. He's the one that created the off-the-wall line of props way back in the 90s. You remember that stuff, James? I do remember that. Yeah, some cool stuff. All the cool kids had off-the-wall products. We'll talk about that when we get Larry on. And I got Don Ling, potentially. Well, no, he said he's in, but we just got to set a date. And uh, a bunch of others. Anyway, so here we are uh, again live on our weekly No BS Photo Buzz live stream with none other than the one and only Mr. Mining Photog himself, James Hodgins. I want to give you guys a quote. We're going to get right into this. And um, the topic of the day. Here's the topic of the day. So uh, I should say that um, James and I have done many, 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 many of these events both podcast and or in person so uh, i'm very used to uh having him on the stage so to speak he's always got a lot of great information a lot of real world experience and uh, i can say in some sense i'm somewhat to a small degree uh responsible for his progress in photography <laughs> <laughs> well I, I you know you were there in the early early days you know Two, 2000 James worked in our studio and and we sort of in a small way helped him uh, mold himself. That was a, a big a big way, not a small way, but a big okay. way. Okay. Well, I don't want to blow my own horn or anything cuz that's not what's important to me. What's why you do, why you do it when we're alone all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> no, the uh the uh experiences were uh, no, it was been yeah. So anyways, all that to say that you're uh, you've had an interesting um uh, 20 plus years, 25 years uh, in photography, still at it. And you made a quote the other day, you made a post the other day. And on top of the fact that I wanted to get you back here because you always got a lot of cool things to share with us. I wanted to get into this topic. And I'm going to read you guys the quote. You know it, but uh, for the benefit of those who might be listening and or watching or watching the replay, this is the topic. And I think this is a really good post. When I read this, I thought, oh, this is exactly where we're going to go with this uh, today's uh, photo buzz. Uh, so James posted, even after 26 years, I still have to prove myself every time I am on the job. One time when I was on the, on site going through orientation, I was asked, you're a mining photographer. So what projects have you worked on? I replied these past few years, I've photographed multiple mining companies and equipment manufacturers throughout multiple countries. Good answer. By the way, the images are then used for websites, social media, product brochures, and annual reports. Hey. Uh, okay, but what specific projects have you worked on? And it was the tone that said, I am not convinced. What qualities do you have here? What qualities do you have to be here? And this is what I, now I'm quoting James, this is what I have, this is why I have used all client images on my phone, which I do too, by the way, quick and instant credibility, so I can quickly scan through the images that are relevant to what I'm about to photograph to give me credibility so that I can do the job to their satisfaction to gain their confidence. This is the exact same reason why you should have great imagery showcasing your products or services. Everyone will scrutinize it and question it. Always put your best foot forward and present your work with your chin held high. Now, before you guys comment, I'm gonna get you in there in a second. I wanna say something. I sent out an email to everybody this morning and I, I uh, quoted that quote that I read when I was like 21 years old. I remember reading this book and the guy said, photography is like a unicycle. If you stop fall, pedaling, you fall off always remember that it always rung true to me and and this applies to this philosophy and you might say it's a part of a client management strategy which is part of a marketing strategy which is all about uh communicating to clients so that you have credibility and the the opposite to this would be to assume they should know how good you are and how qualified you are they however should. however that never that's not the way to go. And I'm 100% with you on this, James. I'm 120% with you on this one. And that is to say that we're always having to educate clients no matter what. I have clients that come back 10 times. So I still educate them the same way. And uh, you are obviously 
you know, you've highlighted this story where it happened to you and this was, was a one-time thing where somebody asked the question and you didn't this, hear them ask the question, but you sort of detected it in their tone. This, this, this happens all the time. Yeah. In this industry, all the time. So I'd probably say 75% of the time they don't either believe I do what I do or they can't understand why I'm doing it. Because there's a dis not a there's there's two entities with the clients, right? There's the the labor part and then there's the business part. And those two have a balance, but within the company, like the the laborers don't do the business part and the business people don't do the labor part. So I work with both. Okay. So, okay. So a, lot of, a lot of the times they don't under, when I go on site they don't understand a why I'm taking pictures, b what the pictures are going to be used for, and c like I really do this, and why are we doing this? Like, <laughs> and then the number the the second question I get asked all the time as I'm in full gear. So you've been underground before? <laughs> it's like. No, I bought this at the used mining safety yep. clothes store I, I yesterday. Assume, I assume that the term mining photographer implied that, you know, I'm in the mining industry. But okay. I get that I get that often. Very, very often. Still. So so good. I gotta ask you then two questions. One, you obviously have to deal with this both with the labor aspect and or with the administrative, the you know, the big wigs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Equally, right? Is that yeah, so? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I mean, the business side of it, they know because for the business side of it, it's all about marketing. Mm -hmm. It's all marketing, right? They need images, they need video, they need, you know, graphics, they need everything to market via their company. So when it comes to that aspect, um, I don't get that much, uh, those many questions, right? Right. Uh, they just ask if I can do the job. They'll give me the the job and then and say, "Can you can you provide this?" And it's well, yes, I can. Yeah. But but then when I usually go to like sites or whatever, that's where it's just like, so you you really do this? You do this because <laughs> it's like as a career, and you get paid <laughs> because it, because in yeah and I, yeah and because I, I don't know I guess uh, I guess in the past it's all been stocks. So do you know what I mean. Like 20 years, ago, 20 years ago, it was all stock photography, not even snapshots. 20 years ago, it was all stock photography that they get. Very rarely did they bring in professional photographers to actually do the job. So, right, right. So on site, wouldn't see anything like that, you know? In interesting. You said There's very you few photographers in history that have done this, uh -huh. you know? Done what? Mining or industrial? Yeah, yeah mining. I mean, yeah, how many mining photographers do you know? I've only met one. And, yeah, well, I mean, well, that's because I'm in Sudbury. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mining because, it's, because it is location specific, right? So. Well, it's a niche. Of, 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 I think it's a niche of a niche. It's commercial with a sub niche. And mm -hmm. when I was 20, 21 years old, I worked for Rene Dion, who was considered to be one of the top mining photographers in North America. And there was like, like you said, there was nobody doing it. And I think for that reason, it's, it's amazing, but you're still going to deal with every, a lot of people, like you said, now I got to ask you, James, you said you deal with both areas, but I'm thinking and guessing that it's largely with the labor people, which means you're on the job doing the actual photo shoots and you get a lot of this, yes. this resistance, right? Yeah. yeah. So this helps you Convey. Now, now, part of the questions I can understand, like part of the question I can understand because it's a safety aspect as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're going underground, you got to go on on-site, you have to go through your safety orientation. And sometimes that's where I get the questions like, you know, like, have you been doing it before? Do you know what you're doing? Because they want to ensure our safety and mind safety, right? So I can yeah. understand. But sometimes, you can, like I said, sometimes you can tell in the tone and the way it's said. It's, it's kind of like, you know, like the tone was, yeah, but what qualifies you to be here? Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was kind of, it was kind of like I was wasting his time. So like, why do it, you know, so that was the tone. It was very, uh, it was a very specific tone where I was like, well, and you know, like, you know, I kind of set it back with a little bit of attitude. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Um, so, but you're accustomed to this, obviously. I, I am. Yeah. And, and you've got a solution for it. And then also, yeah, well, yeah, solution is. You know, put your money where your mouth is really yeah. well you used to have that thing i don't on your website that uh, 
nappy versus crappy where you had the before yes. pictures and that do you yeah keep those on your phone too so you can show them uh, well, here's yeah, what I normally got, people show you yeah. and this is what i can do for you yeah i got some yeah i still have some and a lot of the times i'll uh you know like say it's underground and i got like a multi-light setup to do something specific i will literally throw a flash on camera and go click and then i will take my picture and i'll show him see this is the difference mm -hmm. uh so i still i still do that every once in a while you posted um, an image the other day that shows that i believe yeah the guy yeah. with the beard yeah 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 can i show and, that? find it yeah and then um you know and, and not only that like once i get on the job for every person i photograph i still kind of have to prove it that a i'm not wasting your time b you're gonna like this image and see, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to make it quick, painless and efficient uh, because, you know, like they're there to work. The majority of my like I very I'd say 80 percent of the time when I go to do uh, create an image library, you know, they're not halting process uh, processing. They're not halting work at all. So I'm showing up and I got to interrupt these people's time, <laughs> you know, so I got to get in, get it done as fast as I can because they don't yeah. they can't spend an hour for me to create five photos of them. They just yeah. don't have that time. Sometimes I get the time. Sometimes the company's like, no, no, we need specific images. So you tell us how much time you need. But a lot of the times if I'm going to a site for two to three days to create images, it's on the fly. So yes. I have to again prove to myself right away, like, yeah. which well, is another which is another reason why I actually got an assistant in the last two years, mm -hmm. because now it's like, okay, you start setting up stuff. I'm going to go talk to this person that I got to right. photograph and kind All of right. go over things and let them know what I'm doing so that I can gain their confidence. So they're not sitting there going rolling their eyes and like, oh my god, just like let's get this over with. You know? You're doing you're doing PR on the fly constantly in real time constantly. That's amazing. I love it. Um, well, Rob, it's the same thing. Like when you go set up, like say for your doctor's party yeah. or, or John, anytime you're doing some sort of a set, like I call it the assembly line, like photography, where you got the one set up and you're just bringing in people after people, teams people. or every single person now you steps in front of your camera, you're giving them a little spiel, aren't you? You're, you're talking mm -hmm. to them, get asking their name, this is a little bit about themselves so that they feel what more comfortable in front of the camera, right? Cause uh, the more comfortable your subject is, right? Mm -hmm. The better the image. Mm -hmm. You're right. So uh, most of the people that I photograph don't get their photos taken often. No, people are uh, that are weird about it these days. Have you noticed that by chance? I've noticed that people and yep. I don't know, I think it's maybe social media or something's created this serious, serious resistance. Oh, I hate taking my picture. Well, yeah, if I had a dime for every time I've heard that. I usually <laughs> just reply, no, I hate taking them. <laughs> I was I hate getting my picture taken and I say I hate taking them too so so when you when you them. when you're hon when you're honing in on their work time and they're like oh we got to do it. and they people hate that they hate having their pictures taken yep and I I find men much more so yep. to that and you know, you got these rough yep. and tumble blue collar workers they're very skilled at what they're doing and you're you're hedging you're hedging your bets so to speak so that you can they're now your allies, mm -hmm. right? And yep. you're, this is going to ultimately not only create a good experience. They're going to like, wow, that guy was actually kind of cool. No, I exactly. That. Yes. Yeah. Right. But and, it, and it, and it, and it, it, it works like it does work. Like even the last out of town job I had, you know, corporate you even said like, I heard you're really enjoyable on the site. <laughs> You heard that? <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. She's like, so I get, obviously they were talking about me, right? Yeah. But that's well, because I take that five minutes just well, to get to yeah. know the person, right? Okay, I got to ask you two things. Is that your right website, miningphotog.com? Yeah, it'll take you there. It's okay. The other thing I want to say too is, Matt, when you used to work for us, I used to say this all the time. You remember? Everybody loves James. Mm -hmm. You're just well, a likable not, person. Well, not everybody, but we don't talk well. about the people that don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, generally speaking, people like your enthusiasm and your personality. So that's important to bring to the game. Well, it's like, it's almost like, remember when uh, you've, you've probably seen it before. I, I, I t if something's going right, I tend to get excited. It was like, you know, when I start speaking, when we were doing OBS, I speaking, I get really excited. Or when we're doing those live shoots. And yeah. you look at the back of the camera and you're like, oh, this is awesome. I still do that. I still yeah. do that all, all the right. time on the job site. I'm like, oh, man, this is badass. You're, you're going to like this. <laughs> and I'll show it to them. I want to show you where I'm going with this. It's not quite there yet, but this is where I'm going with it. 
again, I got to win their confidence, right? So you show them. I the show them. Constantly, you, show them your, you show them your portfolio to establish credibility, and they're like, "Okay, I get it." And then, yeah. while you're actually shooting, you're going yeah. next level up. You don't get bored with that. That's never changed for you. That's still the same. Because I remember you were always that way, and and I got to be honest with you, I learned a lot from seeing you do that. And I was like, you know, I got to I got to do more of what James does, because it helps with the rapport. And John, that's exactly what Peter Hurley does. He's all sure. about that rapport. And so when I, yep. I joined the Headshot Crew, James, in case you're wondering who Peter Hurley is, I'm not sure. Peter Hurley is, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. And, and I was watching his videos. I'm like, oh, shit. This is in the same category of what you're talking about yep. when you're talking about that enthusiasm during the actual photo shoot. And, uh, you know, I'm 63 years old. I'm not too old to learn new things. I got to put my ego aside, my pride aside, and say, there's something here for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that applies 20 years ago when you started working for us and or I was working with you and you see you on, on the job, uh, that enthusiasm you're talking about and feeding it back to the client. I, I sometimes give them full photography lessons when I'm photographing. I'll show yep. them the difference between using one light, two lights, three lights. Yep. You know, I just Brilliant. want to show you. I just want to show you the difference. Like, and I just want to show you the lighting difference, just to show you why it's taking. You know, because the other thing I get is like once. Once a while, time of the Brent, but now McKeon. Once they start setting up lights, they always go, "Oh, oh, this is like not like a snapshot type thing." Like, <laughs> no, no, no. This is like this. This one's going to be more creative. It's going to take me a while to set up and stuff like. And here's why. Here's and why. And I show them. So by the time the shoot's done, I make sure that the a the client, which means the the company that hired me, if I have a client representative on site uh, with specific criteria i make sure they're happy with the photo and then i also make sure that the subject that i'm shooting is happy with their photo because they need to know that this photo a it, you know is, will, might be used in the marketing materials through this company which mm -hmm. means it could be on the website it could be on their social media it could be on their annual reports and if it's really really good or i think it's like really really good i often say don't be surprised if this is on a cover of a magazine because it could because it really could just like you know. and you're just, not you're not I'm bullshitting just, you know, no i'm not bullshitting no, i'm this not is, trying to this. sound cocky or anything but it, it's it's possible yeah Be because that's what happens the company gets written up on something you know they have an article whatever or magazine uh, the magazine wants images they might send them that image mm -hmm. right which um all comes back to a early no bs days and our early ppoc and ppo days I still try to shoot everything as if I'm entering it into a print competition. Wow. Is somebody uh, strangling a cat in the background somewhere? Or? That's the cat adoption agency next door. <laughs> okay. we, we have a long... I'm, I'm looking around at my cat and I'm like, is there... Like, what's this? I'm surprised you can hear that. I see. <laughs> when my headphone's on, I can barely hear it. Now, yeah. yeah. No, we have a so cat I, adoption agency and they got a lot of cats there. So right I, still, I still shoot with, um, you know all the time looking through the viewfinder you know a composition b lighting storytelling distinct subject you know looking at the background is there anything in the background that's like you know mm -hmm. uh you know that's going to detract from you know almost like how we used to invert the images to see what the main focus was right uh, i'm still trying to shoot like that uh again right. some sometimes half my days are just spent literally shooting like snapshots like oh click oh go click because we just don't have the time or you know but the creative stuff that i try to shoot um yeah i definitely take my time with it a little bit to get some, you know quality yeah. images this is uh i think this is an aspect to photography that you don't go to school and learn about you don't necessarily read about it in a book you know um, i made the quote photography is like a unicycle stop pedaling you fall off could apply to that indirectly. However, it's evolved to a level where what we're talking about is something that you need to apply and be aware of. And if you're not there, if you're not experiencing this, and if you're not applying this in your photography, you're missing out on something that I feel is really, really important. You know, back in the old days, photography was very technical. You know, in 1958, everything was very structured and measured. And it was usually a man in a suit and everything was just, but because it was so technical, you know, 100 years ago, especially. So nowadays, we have to bring this to the game. And, uh, you know, for me, John, I'm gonna ask you if you want to comment on in a second, for me, I'm, a good bulk of my income is fairy portraits, mm -hmm. 
which is me working with children, which is the same thing that I've been doing since I started in photography. James, when you used to work for us, you saw how many child portrait sessions we were doing because we had the Creative Kids program. Well, sometimes, sometimes you're up to like 15 to 20 sessions a day. Yeah, and it was crazy. And I'm just, but that's, to me, I'm really good with kids. I just turn into a child and I apply to what you're saying, but on a child's level and I'm ramping that up and it's always evolving and building and building and building with the fairy portraits, which is a whole new level to me of uh, portrait photography, child portrait photography. It's such an amazing experience. And I'm like now just going, holy shit. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I was like, yep. wow, this is a really big deal. You got mom over there on the couch watching and she's crying. Mm -hmm. You got the little seven year old girl and she's just like, this is, she's going to talk about this for a long time. That's a really good point. And they're going to order a canvas. And if I see them 10 years later, they tell this to me all the time. They go, your picture is still on our walls and it gets comments. People walk in, they go, is that Allison? And they're just blown away. And all of this ties together. I believe it's uh, the, the non tangible aspect of it is you like my sign language, this ability mm -hmm. to be able to communicate with people and convey that credibility this is all mm -hmm. about and the way you applied it james I, I like that it's like instant credibility which you you bounce off that into the photo shoot and um, john do you have any thoughts on that that you've experienced in your studio and or? No, so far everything he's saying i think is is very transferable to any kind of photography it's not just mining photography because we all get that and i think the biggest thing he was talking about was the comfortability with the people and you were saying how peter hurley is big on that and I yeah. had that yesterday. I was doing a headshot of a lady, and she's never had a professional headshot done in her life, a professional photograph, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And her husband's a mortgage advisor here, and she's just getting into real estate. And she came here, and before I even got her in front of the camera, we came back here into the lounge and like, talked to her. She got changed. I told her what we're going to do. We just got to know each other. It was about 10 minutes before we actually got in front of the camera. So yeah. by the time she, For that reason. Out there, she was comfortable with me, she said, like, you know what? I've never had a photo, and I actually already feel comfortable in front of me right now. She actually came right out and said that. We yes. shot a bunch of shots and I shoot tethered right to my laptop because I love shooting tethered to me right. that instant gratification instead of showing them the back of the camera I just I'm on this little swivel table here and I can actually just swivel around and say here's what we're getting so far and she's like whoa that, that looks amazing and then yeah. she's comfortable and then we're going by the time we were done uh, she said that she had the most fun so I think if you can get that report because it's going to show on the eye face the face and even went to what James doing I was looking at his uh, I had put it up on the screen there those magazine covers and the people I call them candid posed, where they're supposed to look mm -hmm. candid like you're flying the wall, just catching them on the job. But really, you've got them posed exactly to make sure the face mm -hmm. is right, the lighting's right, everything. And to make it look realistic, like you're really just catching them on the job is, is a good mm -hmm. trait to have. And you yeah. have to have them comfortable in front of you to do that. So, so yeah, you call it candid posing. I call it suggested posed. <laughs> uh, and, and basically, it's not, and I'm not putting them in a pose that they wouldn't be. Basically, I say, show me what you do. Yep. And when I find what I think looks good, as far as an angle and composition, I'm going to have you freeze it for one second. I'm going to take a quick snapshot to show it to you. And then, then we're going to build it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I do, sh I don't shoot tether John, but I actually shoot directly to my galaxy note okay. so that I can show them right there. And then I'll okay. actually, I actually pull up the pen and I actually do a quick ed finished edit on my phone within like a minute and say, this is what like, kind of where we're going with a finished look and then wow. like oh and then it's like oh okay but i do the the same thing that you you mentioned rob which is really important it's not even the pe person that i'm photographing that you have to impress it's the people watching it's the other workers you <laughs> yeah. need to talk and i do the same thing john like if you explain everything that you're going to do before you even touch the camera it puts them at ease yep. and right. i do the same thing this is what i'm going to do we're going to do this we're going to get set up i'm going to i'm going to do a find and i always say the same thing first i need to find a camera angle so i need to see what you're going to do once i find that then i'm going to set up my lighting and get the lighting down so that it's optimum and mm -hmm. then once we're going to do that i said we're going to take the photo the photo is only going to take like 15 seconds out of our mm -hmm. time everything mm -hmm. else leading up takes a little bit of time so just sit and relax we're going to get some stuff on i'm going to find a camera angle and then i'll come get you and all right and they're like oh okay like that's great because like, <laughs> they're not sitting around like am i supposed to be doing something right so it's not even the person that you're photographing in your studio it's good like john uh, rob you said it's mom on the yeah. side right she's yeah. listening she's listening to everything you say that's she's right. listening to so even if like even if that child does not cooperate even if my photo 
didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted or the quality I wanted, the experience or the experience that we presented there, that's what they're going to talk about. Yep. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, I had a good time, right? And then it's such a small world. Like I always say the mining is such a small, in- uh, it's a big industry, but it's a small world because the mining industry is huge, but it's really small. Like we cross paths constantly. Like you never, right. burn, a, you never burn a bridge in the mining industry. No. It's like it's less than six degrees of separation, right? <laughs> and, and we're and and word does get around, right? Oh yeah, you, you did. You, you were at so and so site. You shot my friend. They said they had a great time. Like you know, like you know, it it always goes around. So you, like you always have to be on. Yeah. Always, mm-hmm. always have to be on. No matter who's looking, who's watching. You assume everybody's watching and scrutinizing constantly. That's a good point. I, I actually never never thought of that before. Um, can I just good comment mindset on to it? be in? Can I add one thing, Rob? Because we've said yeah, this before. Ahead. You go remember ahead. how sometimes, and, and John, you'll agree to this. Do you remember how sometimes a friend of yours or whatever comes up and they're like, "Oh, my cousin just got married," and you know, let me show you the pictures, and you look at them, and they're horrible. <laughs> the wedding pictures are so bad. Like yeah, they're right. so bad, and you're like, you feel bad oh, yeah. for them, and you're like, oh, and they're like, oh yeah, we love them. They're beautiful. Like oh blah 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 blah. Like we had such a good time. It was so much fun. Well, here's the thing. I remember a photographer that was a total a hole, and the uh-huh. pictures were really good. But the bride and groom didn't like the pictures as much because the experience they had with the a-hole was not fun. Yeah. He was demanding. He was angry. He was rushed. He was rude. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And then I see people that had such a fabulous time. And maybe their pictures aren't the greatest uh, yeah. to our standards. But they love them because it was the whole experience. The photographer, yeah. they had so much fun. They were yeah. relaxed. Yeah. So they don't care if there's you know sunlight halfway across a face or whatever. Like, yeah. like you know, we're, We scrutinize yeah. it I ourselves, know. right? But maybe yeah. it's because the experience they had. Yeah, was like top, and it's the same thing with all of us. You give them a good experience. The, it's not saying you, you you can lower the quality of your work, but no, it no. almost like it, it almost like instead of an eight, they've automatically put it to a nine just because it was so much fun. Yeah. So imagine yeah. if your work was stellar and you had that ramped up experience. Exactly. exactly. It's just what like a, it's, it's just like a restaurant. What a home run! What it's a not home just run. all about the food, but it's the atmosphere and how much fun and how much a good experience you had with the service and the atmosphere and the talking or conversation. You don't just yeah. go out to eat; you go out for an experience. Now, yeah, it's, it, it, it's the same thing with anything, you know. So you always put like a, you always put your best work forward, put your best attitude, swallow your pride or whatever, swallow your anger, swallow your anxious, swallow your stress and just give the best you can possibly get. Yep. Yeah. That's amazing. So you mentioned, uh, I, I never thought of that, but it's very, very true. What you just said about you're impressing everybody else who's sort of in the audience. Yep. And, uh, especially on weddings, especially on weddings. I was just going to say that. And I've always said this, that to me, my greatest allies are the bridesmaids. Yep, exactly. So if I'm doing a kick-ass job, mm-hmm. the bride, she's not in that headspace. But the bridesmaids are. They're like, oh, this guy rocks. Look at that image he just created of her. Mm-hmm. Yep. They feed that back to her. Yep. Her confidence goes through the roof. Yep. And then I get new ideas. They, you know, they might suggest something totally off the wall. Hey, why don't we all jump in the water off the end of the dock or something like that? <laughs> Where it, well, as if I suggested it, they exactly. might go, what the, what the hell's your problem? But if they suggest something crazy, it's uh, the credibility. That's so true, James. Yep. And John, you that- mentioned you mentioned like when you did that portrait and it was her first time having a business portrait done. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, perfect. Or just a professional portrait altogether. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the benchmark. I am mm-hmm. going to set the benchmark. Now you're going to compare everything else to me. Exactly. I think the best compliment I ever got at a wedding was when I'm shooting and halfway through the wedding, the bride maids one or two of them or even the groom they'll come up to you and say or not groom but his guys say oh my god this is awesome i wish we hired you for our for our, for yeah. our wedding instead of the person we did get and, and they have the best compliments you can get and they haven't <laughs> even seen the pictures no yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. John, john you're still crackling really bad i don't know if you want to yeah, unplug, yeah. Plug. We'll um i want to say something about that you mentioned uh me impressing the mom and she's crying and I just it, I, I talk about that happening a lot but I've never really thought about it beyond that except for now and when, when you just brought it up again and in uh, in context of what we're talking about it's like I think she's crying because of the I've sort of got the little girl in a spell mm-hmm. and she's going along with this magical experience and it's touching the mom 
Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Now, can I'm... you imagine capturing all of that, Rob, in a very cinematic promotional video? Well, yeah. how would you, you know, do that? You... Yeah. Well, you basically you're gonna have to create that experience and hope that maybe you get those tears. But you create that experience. You just imagine, like, uh, you imagine. You know what I'm talking about when I say like cinematography yeah. promotion. So you I know yeah. the setting up, the little girl like getting dressed up, dressed up and maybe trolling around, like getting into it. You working with them, flash to mom, nice lighting on mom and dad or who's ever on the sideline, yeah. right? And if you imagine you captured that where mom's actually got a tear coming down. Yeah. You know, like, all oh, moms are going to be like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was just picturing when you were saying about that experience. I was picturing that. And when you were saying mom cries, picture it in the head. It's like, man, that's powerful. That's powerful stuff there. That would be a, a very, very powerful promotional video. <laughs> just <laughs> you walk up to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need some tears. <laughs> exactly. uh, as best as when you make the dad cry, because I did that yeah. with kindergarten one time you're doing the slide presentation that's in the dark in the room and then all of a sudden you hear tears and you're thinking yes ka-ching because you know the tears are going you're going to make some money turn the lights on after it's done you look over it wasn't mom that was crying it was dad that was crying because that was his little girl yeah yeah Yeah. well that's good emotions emotions sell right so and i guess it applies to the rough and tumble rub rugged world of mining photography (laughs) because well we're all human we all have emotions and we all react the same way yeah so and I guess one of the big differences, and this is a question I jotted down way earlier, is mining photography really that dangerous? Sure it is. <laughs> he might not come out of that mine after a while. I, he could just be buried there. I, was, there. I, was I mean, being, my, I was actual, being... my actual job of taking the photos is not dangerous, but it's still in the dangerous environment. Yeah, and I kind of knew that. I was being facetious. But mm-hmm. tell us about the dangers of mining photography. Oh, well, anything. Um, I mean, you've got, you know, from the very small, like a tripping hazards or slipping hazards or whatever to the big, like, you know, you do have potential for cave-ins, you know, equipment uh, accidents, uh, you know, falling rocks, uh, stuff like that. Uh, toxic attacks, material, maybe? Terrible. Not necessarily toxic material. No, don't get me wrong. Like, I have never really felt only once that i feel a little bit unsafe on a site and then and that was in another really? country but yeah just once um but i've never felt not safe at a mine site because the safety protocols that they have uh and you know and and even like all the safety orientation training we do and stuff like that uh i, I i've never gone really underground and, and been like yeah this is this is this is scary i don't i don't like this just once yeah um i gotta ask you guys a question we talked about candid poses. Yeah. Uh, and and whether you're doing, um, you might even somewhat call it a editorial or a headshot of sorts in the mining or in industrial world. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, it's a person doing something. Uh, there's, and I'm sure all of you guys will relate to what I'm talking about. I want to just kind of get your opinion and feedback on this because I'm, I'm actually having this conversation with somebody right now. The real estate agent on the phone. Not the same as a miner loading a big $20,000 drill bit on the tip of his, whatever that drill, drill, you know, that big drill is. And uh, you, you know that shot, it's so cliche and off the wall. Uh, way off the charts, I'm going to say cliche and corny because uh, when you think about it, it sounds like, yeah, this is what I do on the job. I'm on the phone. I'm an agent. <laughs> maybe I'm an insurance agent. Maybe I'm a real estate agent. Maybe I'm a, mm-hmm. a sales rep. <laughs> and they want, here's me on the job mm-hmm. versus your guys on the job mm-hmm. loading the $20,000 drill bit. Yep. And it highlights the quality of the drill bit. And this is the company that wants to see that in action with yep. the dude, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I don't see um, a shot of a person on the phone. I do. On the cover of a magazine. I do. Well, do convey your thoughts. I, on well, because I got to do, I actually got to do the, quite the same thing now. I mean, it's uh, I do do a lot of photo- photographs with communication on site, right? Whether it's the mm-hmm. walkie talkie or now it's the cell phones, right? So real estate agent, 
you know, we're thinking like, you know, your first thoughts would be like, oh, like sitting in a studio on the phone, like that old cliche. Yeah. If it That's was me, I'm talking about. if it was me shooting it or an idea that I would do, I'd be going downtown where you have some sort of skyscraper or building like reflective building, almost like a business type building. Yeah. I would shoot a little bit of a lower angle, shallow depth of field, really nice lighting where they're on the phone, not even looking at the camera. It's almost like you caught that suggested candid shot where they're on the phone and like, ah, big smile or whatever make it very inviting almost like how you shoot your business portraits raw very shallow depth of field nice yeah. lighting right uh like the i think it was the chamber of commerce you did or something i remember ways back but anyway something like that uh set, like just completely out of the box different still on the phone and the phone would be on this side not the side facing the camera um almost yeah. like almost think like stock photography yeah well, that's right? what i think of when i think of stock that's or all. these like Think of stock when I think of these styles of photography. That's, that's how I would shoot, shoot something like that. But you got to remember, Rob, I actually did two realtors together. They work as a team, and they're sitting on these two white chairs, actually, at my studio with a white background. And they have both had, heads, had cell phones, like you said, and they're pretending like they're on the phone, both of them. That is now, I just noticed it about a week ago. They just put that up as a billboard down the road from here. Oh, really? On the main street there, and they're nice. both sitting on nice. the chair with their cell phones. So you never know what it's going to be used for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Rob, or like James says, always shoot it like it's going to be on a cover of a magazine. Make it mm -hmm. so it's the best you can be, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially okay. especially and like I shoot a lot of individual portraits, and it's the same. Yeah, it's they're the same. It's the same thing over and over. But it's again, how am I going to light it? Is the background like you want that? You want that little bit of dramatic lighting, not dramatic, but you know where it's popping out, almost like you shot it with a Phase One Hasselblad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, there's always, uh, always ways. But that's how I, that's how I do it. I, I would shoot it like the guy just like I would actually have him where the guy was just walking out of the building and somebody just called him and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" And that's the stop right there, but shooting uh -huh. from the side. Yeah. See, my first reaction to that request is to talk them out of doing it. Oh, I think it would be a fun challenge. And uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'd have to find you an image because I think I saw one where I was like, yeah, that was, that was really, that's a really good image. Um, and it's something so simple. And I think I have one, some, I think I have one somewhere in. I'm thinking of the utility because when you're talking about communication devices and mines and industrial settings, you're sort of conveying that message, which is, to me has got a lot more validity compared to the person in a suit. The, your job on for, the phone, but for that, for that, all you have to convey is approachable, friendly. Yeah, and that's where I'm going with that. I'm saying, well, that's not to me a convey um, personal and friendly. Is looking at the camera, you know what that Peter Hurley look, right, John? You know the look he does. Yep. That just is. And he's always pushing that confidence and approachability not arrogance and standoffishness. You want to be confident and approachable. So um, I just had another example of a... Uh, <laughs> there you go. I just had, a, I just had another... Uh, shit, I can't remember. It left my Yeah, brain. but okay, so... It'll just, come back just, to me. Hear, hear me out on this. So take the very top middle one, right? Yeah. Very top middle guy's got a phone. Drop that angle down a little bit more. Yeah. Get some nice, really warm lighting. Maybe like, you know, almost like a sunburst in behind him in that upper yeah. sky. Um, you know, and shallow depth of field. Like, you know, close crop. I think that would be. And smiling. You know, <laughs> I think, I personally, I think that's a beautiful, that would be a beautiful portrait. A beautiful yeah. business portrait. So Not even looking at the camera. I just remembered what I was trying to say a minute ago. And the, the corollary, the, the example that I want to run it up against is when a dentist shows... Uh, them working with a drill or a drill uh -huh. <laughs> that to me just implies pain versus the end result well what's the end result you want you want uh, you want you know that nice happy smile you know so I it's not as extreme as that example when you have somebody on the phone when you have somebody on the phone I, it just doesn't click with me because it's not to me a selling feature and it's a it's not even in the category of what James is talking about with his industry where there's a utility to a lot of the photography when it's mm. coming when it comes to working you're working with equipment and this is some serious shit here but an agent on the phone I don't look at it and go oh good thing that guy's on the phone that means I'm going to 
have a nice car when I go see him at the dealership. So have him hammering in the sold sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I would say that that is or, even better than the phone. Or have him hold up a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob's or, got a lot of them apparently outside there. Yeah, yeah. Just a kitten. kitten <laughs> I love kittens. Yeah, exactly. Free but kitten you, with every house. I don't know. I think that that's a, an argument and a debate worth considering and discussing. I, I, th I think it would. I honestly think it just comes down to good photography. Yeah. Really, I think uh, I think you could. Because uh, here's the other thing too. You kind of want to give what the client wants. That's the other aspect. You know, because yeah. I get I get that a lot, too. I get it. I get a lot of like, we need you to photograph uh, Jimbo here and uh, he's going to be doing this. And it's like, it's I just, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, for career, for our sakes. Like, oh my, like, the most boring thing. Like, like, oh, I got to have Jimbo holding a brick up on the wall. And it's like, right. Oh, OK, like I can't change what he's doing because they need that. So mm -hmm. how can I make this the most best image possible and that comes down to well let's get a different camera angle let's like, like a different perspective let's get some good lighting let's really jump it up a notch than me just shooting a two-dimensional stupid image mm -hmm. oh god i hate those i hate those and you know what uh it's funny because this is another post i was going to bring this up at some point there's two things i was going to bring up for this one and what's that i'm i'm at the point now where and this might sound a little not a little bit ego-ish, but it's not because it's an actually product productivity efficiency. You know, I get a lot of the times is let's go around all the offices and get a snapshot of everybody at their desk. <laughs> you get that? I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it because, you know, A, you're catching them by surprise, which you're right. like, oh, hey, hey. <laughs> and they got, their, they got their Tim Hortons coffee and stuff and pictures of their family in the background, which they might not want in the picture. Like, no, they might, so, they might but not. They might. But because we got to go around and do 30 people, like you just go, hey, okay, here, smile. <laughs> so, uh, does, that, the, does, that, the, does that happen to you very yeah, often? It, not no more. Um, the request comes in a lot, but I actually just tell them, I, I'm, I'm, and I. This is where I say, I'm just going to be 100 percent honest with you. Images like that don't necessarily get used a lot in like corporate marketing. I said you could easily just go around and do the exact same thing I would do with your cell phone. Right. Like honest truth. I said, because they're just like they're snapshots. It's really mm -hmm. just here. Look, here, snapshot. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. said, you know, my time here, we should be putting it to use for the more creative side of it. The stuff that's going to take a little bit longer, the right. stuff that's going to, you know, the stuff that they're going to use in their marketing campaign. And I said, I'm just being honest with you. I can do it if you really want to, but that's just my opinion. And then they understand. They're like, oh yeah, okay. We don't want to waste time here. Right. Is Either way I get paid hourly. So, I mean, that's what you want to do. Like, but you, you'd rather steer them in the right direction under those circumstances. Well, yeah, I just rather I'd rather not do it because it's I find it's I don't want to say it's a waste of my time, but it's just like honest truth. It's not like I'm going to get so creative with it. You yeah. Know? Now, if I have to mm -hmm. shoot somebody working at their desk and we need a picture of uh, Sarah at her desk working because she's part of communication and we're using it in uh, marketing. Well, then, OK, well, we're going to go take some time with it. Let's go clear off the desk. Let's make sure yeah. everything's out of the way yeah. and let's come up with an image. But if it's just to go around just to show you know, let's just show like, because you're here taking pictures, let's make sure we get everybody. Uh, I tend to steer it to something else. Yeah. Interesting. So is this part of the, uh, this thing that happens, I've noticed this happen a million times. Maybe you do too, uh, John, you're doing either a wedding or a family portrait. And then somebody, they're, they're excited. They're liking this whole experience. And they'll say, Oh, well, why don't we do this? And it'll be a variation that you know, is redundant. You're talking about redundancy, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. And, uh, you know, let's say grandma and grandpa with just the male grandchildren and grandma and grandpa with just the, the girls. And we just photographed this amazing series of pictures with all the grandkids. And it's like, you know, okay, grandma yeah. and grandpa with all the grandchildren, female grandchildren who are between the ages of 10 and 11 or 10 and 15. It's just, it becomes redundant. Too much variety for no reason. So... Uh, I'm thinking that that psychologically speaking is part of where and why that happens. People just get excited and they think of these ideas and they're really wanting to be helpful. It sounds like mm -hmm. they think it's oh, a great I, idea. Oh, I love, I love, I love it when I have clients that do that. 
that just keep throwing ideas out there. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I'm serious. I love it. I love it. Bring it on. Like, Except for that because, one idea you just talked well, about. Well, that's not an idea. That's just, again, that's, I would do it if that's what they need. If they need yeah. that and they're going to use that, like if that's on the list that they need, then I will do it. But if it's one of those things where we're kind of looking for stuff to do and like, that's well, what I'm talking we, about. We can go yeah. around and shoot this. I say, well, we can. Well, even for instance, I had one where that's what they wanted to do. And I, and I basically gave that spiel. Mm hmm. And we ended up, and they're like, well, no, we may, and, and we saw it. And then the mine rescue captain walked in. I said, or we can photograph the mine rescue captain, <laughs> right? With the vehicle and all that, which we ended up doing, which they ended up using in a big marketing campaign. So it actually, mm -hmm. they're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea, right? I'm not trying to leave everybody out, but there's some images where really they are just snapshots. Yeah. They're just, snap, they're just snapshots. And anybody can do those. And yes. really, like, any, like, I, yeah, I have an expensive camera, but honest truth, your iPhone's going to take just as good a picture if I just go like this, click with my camera. It's going to be mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So. Interesting. Oh, very interesting. And uh, again, this is why I, I like talking about this kind of stuff, because you don't hear about it, don't read about no. it, you don't take a course on it. Even if you took a university level course, the professor was probably overeducated anyways and doesn't really know these aspects and you know this is stuff that you can only get from photographers that are out there day after day year after year you know after uh, so many decades you start to develop a sense of uh, communication a sense of uh, mastery in all aspects lighting posing using the right equipment the right composition and exposure and all of that stuff it comes down to three basic words, running a business. That's right. Yeah. That's what it is. You're not just a photographer. You're running a business. And yeah. if you're going to treat people like crap or you're going to just throw their ideas away or do whatever, they're not going to hire you. That, that, no that's how good that, you are. That, that's the other thing. You know, you hit the nail on the button. Like, you know, you, I had one email where it was um, – I had one email recently where they said the client wants to know if – they will get the quality of image that you have presented on your website. No, <laughs> you got to pay. And I, and I said, <laughs> and I, so when I call, I usually when something like that, I'd rather just talk on the phone instead of mm -hmm. sending me. So I called them on the phone and I said, yes, it is. I said, yeah, the yeah, reason, yeah. the reason yeah. being is I will strive to give you the best work I can possibly give you for what I have to work with because it's my name and business on the line. I Good said, one. I, my business only thrives with repeat business or new customers, and I don't get that unless I do the best I possibly can. If, mm -hmm. I, if I didn't give you the best, you wouldn't hire me back. And my goal is to give you the best so that you do hire me back. Maybe not a year from now, maybe not two, maybe three years from now, it'll come back around. I said, so I always strive to give the best. And I always put it in there. I will give you my best for what I have to work with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because with in my industry, there is so many variables. Right. There's so many variables. Oh, we have to shoot this machine. Okay, we have this much time to do it, but when we get underground, it's at a different location, which takes an extra amount of time. A, it's not running. It broke down. So now I can't give the images that we were expecting to give. Yeah. But even though it's shut down, I can still do these images instead right. mm -hmm. because we don't actually have to have it running. So right. for what the situation was, I am going to give you the best. Yeah, that's but preemptive. There's just, there's just so many variables in, in stuff like Or what if it's raining? Mm -hmm. What if it's raining? I got to, you know, like the last time I was on site, uh, we had to do all environmental stuff, which is outside while it was raining. So they're mm -hmm. not going to get that beautiful, sunny type, warm no. fall colors. But we may do with what we did. You know, I, no, no, I, no. you guys work in the rain. I'm going to photograph in the rain, but it's going to be a different, but it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best in the rain picture <laughs> I can possibly give you. That's, right. That's amazing. Catering um, their expectations right from the start. Well, that's exactly it. Um that just reminded me now too, John, like when we used to give our wedding spiels to get wedding mm -hmm. clients, you basically wanted to give them as much information as you possibly could before they even hired you. Yep. Right. Yeah. Before they even wrote, signed that contract, they knew everything about you, their expectations, what you could do. Mm -hmm. You know, you already laid out, Oh, you're getting married here and here. Oh, perfect. This is where we can go. And if it's raining, you know, we'll do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. You already, you already covered that. Right. Yeah. Amazing. 
Um, okay, let's close it up soon. I just want to talk really quick about equipment. I noticed yesterday I saw a video on YouTube where they were um, showing the uh, Godox 1200. I don't know if it's 1200 watt seconds, oh, but I it's like seen that. it's a new one, I believe. It's a super powerful high speed sync uh, Godox flash. Just wanted to mention that because you do a lot of uh, off camera flash and uh, high speed sync, right, James? Ooh, Godox 1200. Ooh, Aren't you using the Godox now? Nice. I am using Godox, yep. I use all Ooh. Godox. Yeah. 8200s, you love them. Yeah, yeah, I do love them. Yeah, 8200s and a 600. Right. And then a couple and then a couple of small ones too. I think I have three small the 200s ones that I use. Yeah. And a couple of LED lights I throw in there. These little babies? Uh, yeah, something like that. I'd have to look at it again. I just want to mention that because I noticed it and it's like, "Oh, oh, daddy want." <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Do you need it? I know you oh. want it. Oh, yeah. But do you need it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Uh, 1,200. Actually, I think I it's new. 1,600 beans. Uh, see, I might have to look into that one. Well, um, that's where it starts, looking into it. That's where it starts. Rob, a little bit off topic, but I wanted to uh, tell you something because uh, I was I, a vision popped into my head about one of our experiences, and I was thinking about this. I had a question asked me when I was driving. Um, you know, um, I was going to a site and somebody says, are you nervous? And I said, no, I'm not nervous at all. Like, and I was thinking about it. I was like, crap, I don't get nervous anymore at all. Really? Like, I, 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 no, like I don't, I don't get nervous. I might get a little bit feel pressure if it's depending if it's like I'm time constricted and I have like, say a big, the big wig, the CEO. Or whatever. Circumstances. A, a little bit of pressure, but and I have no stress or I'm not anxious about the job I have to do or the quality that I'm going to. Good one. Um, but, but what I was thinking about that and I was like, dang, when did that happen? Because man, like I used to just be like nervous every mm -hmm. shot, every wedding, every shoot I do. I you used that, to throw you know, up. Yeah. You know, at the beginning. Right. And now it's just like, I don't even stress about any of it anymore because a, I don't know what I'm walking into until I get there. So there's no sense in stressing about it beforehand. But I remember, Rob, you and I were driving one time and we had to do, we were shooting a wedding. I was assisting you and uh, it started to rain and it was, you were like, oh. and I remember like I was, uh, I think shooting guys and stuff like that. And I was just like crap and bricks, you know, I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't go inside. Like, oh my God. And I was like, aren't you nervous? And you're like, no, no, just, just, just. We just do what we normally do. But it comes down to because you also had 20 something years of yeah. doing that. You've already done this hundreds of times. You've already experienced everything that could possibly go wrong with a wedding. Yeah. You've possibly seen or had to deal with, whether it's environment or people or location. You you already had so many tricks in your sleeve, and I hadn't had that yet. Yeah. And I realized like, holy crap, I'm there. <laughs> I've, I've repeated it so many times and stuff so yeah, many times yeah. and i've dealt with so many different situations that it's like meh i'll figure it out it'll get done however and that's a really good point i i want to ask you when that happened for you but before you answer i just want to also throw another a bit of light on what you're just, just saying and that is to say that when i'm doing a shoot either a wedding family whatever I really, really want to be prepared in advance with the clients. I want to, like, especially if it's, like, if I'm, like, I'm right now, I'm photographing uh, 14 headshots for uh, an agent, uh, a group in town. And they're not giving me any info. I'm like, I can't do this, folks. You got to tell me. We got to have some, because we're not just going to show up and figure it out with you guys all here. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. somebody's going to ask for something really lame, and they got mm -hmm. it in their head. <laughs> now we got to do it. And I'm like, I can't do that. And if then the was, other person says, yeah, that's a good idea. And they, yeah, and it's like, like, I can't Whoa. do that. You know, I want a picture in the studio of everybody jumping in the air. It was like, I don't have enough fucking room for that. Yeah. I can do it, but you got to give me advance notice and we got to really uh, find a, a bigger studio or shoot individuals. individuals and I got to, yeah, I got to have a plan. The more yeah. information, and then and this really applies to mostly with weddings because, you know, always sit down and talk to the clients a week before the wedding mm -hmm. and we go through everything. Yeah. for the sake of having that confidence and uh but but it's not only that like you mentioned james you feel that level of mastery that's that's a good feeling now a lot of some people also spin it another way and say well the 
time you're not nervous about doing a shoot is when you stop learning. No, that's not true. No. I, I'm still giving it my best every yeah. single chance. No matter how simple the shot is, I'm still going to give the best that I possibly can yeah. with, with what I have to work with, whether that's time or locate environment or, or lighting, I'll, I'll give the best. But yeah, I was just like, yeah. And even McKeon, I was just like, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not, uh, like I just I don't feel that anymore. Like I don't no. feel that nervous is because a no sense in being nervous until I get there to see what I have to work with, and b the job still has to get done. So either yeah. way, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. I get frustrated sometimes if I don't have the time. It, I get the only time I get frustrated now in my head is uh, when I have expectations for a specific image. I'm like, oh, I know how I'm going to shoot this, but then I can't do it due to the location. Yeah. Or the time I have, and it's like, right. oh man, that like that could be magazine yeah. cover quality, but now I just can't do it because so it's that, not gonna. It's, dis know. it's disappointing. That's all. I hate it when that happens because of something I did. Like I forgot my, I have my flash, but there's no. I forgot to take the battery out of the charger, and it, it's not going. <laughs> I hate it when that I've, happens. I've learned my <laughs> lesson a few times in the last few years. We're like, no, I didn't use that that much. The battery should still be good. <laughs> yeah i've done that once yeah you're like with my 8600 like, i did it and it's like yeah i'm pretty sure that's in my camera bag like, I'm like and, then you're, and then you get in and you're like ah crap. oops yeah yeah I that's a that good one a few times lately and it's like yeah now I'll just go over everything yeah <laughs> preparation right preparation yep. preparation because if you if you think about it it's gonna happen yeah. exactly yeah. and maybe you guys can correct me if i'm wrong but i think a lot of why we have the confidence we do when we go out to these shoots is and I could be totally wrong is uh, we learned in the film days, you didn't have a screen on the back of your camera to see if the picture came out. You knew you had to get it right in camera because mm -hmm. nowadays there's so many kids coming out of school, I find, and they're like, they'll take a picture and they're like, look at it like, oh, I could fix that in Photoshop. Right. And they don't want to get right in camera. And maybe that's the confidence factor we have because when we see it, we know we've got it. Mm -hmm. mine, mine, mine's from longevity. It's just yeah. from it's just been for over the years taking thousands and thousands and thousands of images, mm -hmm. and then now within the mining industry, a lot of it is repetitious. Like I do, sh I mean, I shoot the same type of equipment in different spots, but I've just I've experienced pretty well everything that well most of the stuff that could hinder the actual shoot, whether it's time, location, environment, lighting, or whatever yeah. equipment. Mm -hmm. I've pretty well come up with workarounds now. Yeah. So now it's just like yeah, okay, like. That's yeah, amazing. And, and it's a good it's a good feeling to have. Like it's like, oh, okay. Like like if you you enjoy your job a little bit more. It's you know, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. But what's also amazing on top of the amazing? So it's like having a cake made out of amazing, and then you have icing on top, which is more amazing <laughs> with jujubes and pieces of chocolate and sprinkles. And that is the fact that we get paid to do what we do. I love that. Yes. I know. always I feel guilty sometimes. We sh we should touch base on another one just to talk about the marketing because I'm still thinking about that quote you said about the unicycle and it's like nice. Yeah, you know what? Like I still put something out there every single day, like every single day. So what and you're saying is it applies to marketing. It's all about marketing. There yeah. is no business if you're not marketing. That's yeah, plain and simple. True. And John, you said it earlier like I, I'm a business business businessman first and I'm a photographer second. Like photography is just the product, but the yep. business is the business. The business is yep. photography and photography. Just I've seen so many photographers go out of business because they didn't know how to run a business, but they were fantastic, fantastic photographers. photographers. Yeah, very true. Well, Tal talent isn't worth much if nobody knows who you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Is here. that right back there? Yeah, See? I say that. And you know, it's funny because I'll shoot with some new clients and I will give them my whole marketing speech and social media speech and all that and we'll take an hour to go and they get all excited they're like oh my god that's so awesome i never thought about that mm -hmm. and they'll do it for a month and yeah. then it just stops takes discipline and even even yesterday i just went and checked yeah the last post was july 29th Ugh. it just stopped i don't like, know i, I don't know why like, you, yeah I, I don't know why we got to talk about this another day but this is yeah. a really good time you just opened up a whole can of worms so <laughs> This is a good topic, and I'm, my brain's going into this now, and I'm thinking. You know, thinking, Rob, yeah. with marketing, I love marketing, and <laughs> James is 100% right on that yep. observation. Just well, let's talk. Let's bring him back, okay? So okay. we'll talk right. about it again. I got lots It'll be to like talk a monthly guest. Yeah, I got. Yeah, sure. I got <laughs> lots to talk about with that. 
Yeah. So uh, meantime, it's a little over an hour. And James, okay. I really appreciate you coming on board. Yeah, anytime, you too, guys, John. Definitely. This is this has been a wealth of information. I am mind blown. So. And I got my actual camera working this time too. Nice. Yeah, so. yeah I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to step it up here. You guys look way too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, look this one my... died on me weeks ago, and I found out it was the cord that died on me. It wasn't. Uh, look, at, look at my background now. What a junk pile. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been thinking about using one of my. I I got these like vinyl backdrop cityscapes mm -hmm. from yeah. China. That'd be cool. I've been it thinking looks, about throwing one back. That looks businessy. This does. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> All it's right. in, the, in the trenches, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think. It, you want to see something cool? No. Uh -oh. He's gonna play guitar for us. <laughs> no, no. I got some. I got some of James's old uh, wedding samples here. Oh well. yeah, you oh, still I, got those, eh? Yeah, I still. Well, they're good canvases, right? I might yep. uh, use them up someday. So. Anyways, yeah, they're, they're stockpiled in the corner. So, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks a lot, right. James. Thanks, all John, right. for Thank doing you, this. Sir. And, Shoot raw, not JPEG. Okay, guys, talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. All right, guys. Oh.